Hello, welcome to another episode of Chronicles of a Kenyan Cyclist, Chronicles of Kenyan Bikers. I guess anything with two wheels, we probably want to ride it and review it. And uh, with that said, KWS, come on, the ostrich. I really need that ostrich. It's like it's a matter of life and having fun in, in life. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, I digress. So today's episode was suggested by one of our viewers. They said we should do something about night riding. Yeah, night riding. Night riding is um, one of the things I don't like doing. Most people don't like doing it, and but there are a few people who like doing it. So, you know, to each his own. So, yeah, this is a video of me riding at night. Circumstances um, pushed me. To do so, I don't like doing it, to be honest, just let's get that straight. I don't like doing it because our roads are terrible at night. And that just, just goes to show, I've used this road several times. It's my usual commute. And one of the things that when we were doing research, we found out and just put it in perspective is that riding at night, even though you're used to a road and you use it every single day, uh, can really throw off your perspective of the road. It can make it look different. The same stretch of road you use every single day can absolutely look something foreign at night and that's true um now my example is long road as it looks completely foreign at night especially the section between junction and the lenana is just oh jesus christ it's terrible let's just call a speed of speed it's terrible there are no lane markings there are no lights as in it's just a mess and um the problem of it is that it's visibility visibility i think is the underlying issue with um riding at night and not only for riders, it's also for cyclists, it's also for drivers. Visibility is usually a problem. And um, it's multifaceted. It's the person who is riding, um, the person who you're sharing the road with, the other road users, everybody, everything. The lighting on the streets, everything. It's multifaceted. So it, it makes riding at night very, very difficult. And a lot of concentration has to be employed. And um, yeah. A lot of concentration because you have to look at for other things uh, you already have poor visibility on most scenarios most times and now you have to look out for hidden objects because at daytime you probably will see them because in the riding at night you're limited by how far you can see and if these street lights you just made extend it a little bit to make everything look visible but you're really limited in so many ways you have to look out for drunk drivers as well because uh, statistics have shown that between 9 and 3 a.m. that's one of the worst times to ride uh, this is given by a US based study we don't have those figures here in Kenya but you know just ballparking it that's usually the dangerous time because you find people at that time have taken something and curfew they're trying to rush home from the clubs closing or whatever and they're tired so it's it's it just ugh, just sucks so anyway, without further ado, let's get to the clip. Now this is a clip of me coming from work. We had a complicated case that ended up um, making me ride at night. But you know, it's okay, it comes with the nature of the job. So in Gong Road, you can see there are so many things happening. Ah oh, man, as in at night, daytime is already bad enough. At night, it just makes it exponentially worse. And um, yeah, the traffic is surprisingly heavy. I just stopped the clip there for a second. Yeah, you saw that Matatu? I think it had a part to play in this. Already there's a lot of things happening. The traffic is heavy. People are not really sure what lane they're supposed to be on. Again, that's an issue with Gong Road, even the daytime. So I can't really blame the drivers. I blame the road construction. As in like lane markings should come immediately after you this tarmac dries. And that goes to show even for the, the, the road islands and whatever. And lighting. Lighting should be part of it. Because look at this section. It's completely dark. You can see barely, I think, 10, 10 meters, 20 meters ahead, 30 meters. And I'm using the other vehicle's light. I'm kind of trying to do an overlapping technique. Because one of the things we found out is that it's always good to use the other vehicle's lights to increase yours. And um, another thing also is to keep the your speed low. Because you should be able to stop within that distance your light sees and then there's another problem about motorcycles can you see this dark section right in front of me as in it, it sucks i know I've, I'm, I'm probably gonna pass it but that it, it it gives me some grief it gives me grief when i'm riding and i'm sure it gives many people grief <laughs> 
and so it just goes to show there's so many things happening there's a lot of traffic of which it sh you kind of feel it shouldn't at nine o'clock just before coffee time uh, but there's a lot happening so let's let's go on with the clip okay I'm using the guy in front um, doing a shoulder check I usually do that it's to check but you should be brief because if you stay too long doing a shoulder check, um, you can easily swerve on to the side you're looking at. So I keep checking my mirror's situation analysis and all that. And um, I'll just pause the clip here. You saw the lights flashing of the vehicle behind. Uh, I can't really tell. At night, you can't really tell how far they are. And uh, they're pretty bright. Uh, the vehicle in front keeps on doing a brake check, which is okay. I kept on doing the same thing just to make myself... Uh, known lights at the back are completely throwing me off because I can't really tell how far it is and With vehicles have dual headlights at night. It has this weird effect Whereby you really can't tell the distance because the lights are blinding you and it's like a parallax of sort So you can't tell and so I kept on doing a quick shoulder check of which helped me in the upcoming incident and again, I am maintaining a constant distance with the vehicle in front because that is my safe zone i'm I, I know i'm able to stop within that i'm not being impatient i'm maintaining one lane because you notice that the vehicles on the right side of the road are, are passing the ones on the left and they just come out of nowhere you can't even really see another vehicle coming so being impatient at night is a terrible idea just you get you get to your destination the aim is for you to get to wherever you're going safely without incident so now you see that vehicle ahead as we roll the clip is clearly also struggling you can see he's in the middle lane and um, I have already checked that my bug out lane is going to be on the right now I don't encourage guys to have stopped the tape right there I don't encourage guys to do this but the circumstances forced me to do so um, it was very dangerous because you can see where we we'll just stopped the clip there is a broken down vehicle on the island. Of all the places to choose, you have decided to put your broken down vehicle there and you could have just pushed it on the other side whereby there is more space and you clearly be seen and somebody would expect that to be there and not in the center island. So that just, ugh. And there were actually two of them and they had their hazards on but you notice they just came out of absolutely nowhere. And that's one of the dangers of riding at night. The obstacles can just pop out out of absolutely nowhere so the guy in front is maintaining his middle lane which he has he has done so ever since so it kept me a little bit of ease in a bug out side uh, google what a bug out lane is it's like you it's if something was to happen you could easily jump onto that side and get out of danger because it's clear you've seen it you've analyzed it it's it's your safe safe space if something was to happen so I'd really chosen the right side to be my bug out line because the left is a no-go zone I can't see clearly what's happening behind the guy behind is with full beam lights I can't really tell how far he is so changing lanes to the left was going to be very very dangerous and then compound into that let's roll the clip the guy behind keeps getting closer so I'll just stop the clip there you notice that my head kept swiveling more and more but still trying to look ahead and at the same time I'm trying to maintain that same distance with the vehicle ahead so already I think my heart rate had already gone up because this gentleman at the back or this gentle lady at the back was starting to tailgate me and when they came closer I could tell that it was a bus and um, now this is what I did let's roll the clip this is what I did you see I could see the number plate right there around there I could see the number plate and that just gave me an idea of how far or how close they were and it was way too close for comfort way too close so again I don't encourage guys to do this but if a scenario presents itself whereby you have to act drastically to save yourself or to put yourself in a more comfortable position because already night riding is it takes a toll on you in terms of concentration please do it no judgment as long as you get whatever you're going safely so let's roll the clip yeah I was way too close I did a brake check for him and I could see his number plate and I just I just gunned it 
and I apologized to the gentleman because I, I, that was not the right thing to do because he didn't expect me to come from there. And yeah, that's it. Whew. That sucked actually because being tailgated already in the daytime is bad enough. At night, oh man. Yeah, that, that actually sucked. I was visible. He could see me and my brakes actually illuminated his number plate. That's what actually told me how far or rather how close he was. And um, that just sucked because he was already in the moment of stupid. Just, let's call it that. You were in the moment of stupid because there was no need for you to do that. But you still went ahead and did it in an aim to, I think, try and do two laps from town to wherever you're going quickly before curfew, which just makes it a little bit more dangerous on the road with these guys because they're extremely impatient. They want to get whatever they're going quickly, turn around and then go back before curfew hits, of which is kind of dumb because you endanger everybody else and you might end up ending somebody's life just to make a little bit more money and yeah that sucks anyway we'll roll the clip in totality and you tell us what you think there are so many things we can talk about in this one clip road furniture hidden objects visibility issues especially from oncoming traffic my visibility i can't tell if i'm that well seen even though i have reflective tapes at the back my lights are okay my lights at the front are a bit ugh. so many things you can talk about on this clip it just goes to show how difficult it is riding a night can be anyway let's roll the clip and i'll just narrate where i can again joining me the stretch of road is between junction and lenana that's the section which is really poorly done quality of road is good in terms of the tarmac late but everything else ugh, geez. yeah there's that matatu and they usually drive with full beam lights you can see how he's tailgating that vehicle this goes to show he's probably the culprit i couldn't tell i couldn't tell yeah so i highly suspect it's him so the guy ahead doing the brake check which is okay oncoming traffic blinding lights it's it's difficult oh. That was, that was actually somebody trying to cross there. And they just came out of absolutely nowhere. Absolutely nowhere. <laughs> he's doing the brake check. I'm using his lights. He's struggling to see. It's so evident he's struggling to see. And even the vehicle in front doing a brake check. Constant brake checks. If you look at the red lights. Constant brake checks. Because it's difficult to drive and ride here in the dark. You see how Matatu has stopped in a place where it's not supposed to be stopping. They just don't use the stages oh man these stages should also be done away with <laughs> because if they can't use them might as well just get rid of them and there we go so we go past that guy i apologize i was like yo guys come on I was, I was in a very uncomfortable position and you probably just saved me and that's it anyway you let us know what you think about that tell us your experiences about riding at night i know many people have had incidences at night which sucks yeah, i lost my very close friend um an incident also involving at night uh, and so yeah it's it's always scary to ride at night always scary yeah anyway that's it for me guys let us know what you think in the comment sections oh before we go we were supposed to have a sponsor on the show and i'm not going to tell you who they are but we are very grateful for them to sponsor the show they don't they don't sponsor it in in, in any monetary ways it's just they, they give us support and it's kind of cool to get support <laughs> so youtube we don't get we don't get, make any money from this as in this is like zero zero money from this but anyway it'll be fun to see them on the show i think they'll do it next episode that's two weeks from now and um i guess that's it for me guys ride safe remember if you like the video like it if you want to share it share it and you haven't already subscribed smash that subscribe button anyway that's it for me guys Ride safe. Peace.